depending on who was writing him. Um, and I don't think the conflict in his personality was emphasised enough. I think it might have been if his occurrence in the Dreamwave comics had continued. The Dreamwave bio for Scorponok is very, very good. It encapsulates everything that I consider essential to the character, which is these two parts of his personality. The power-hungry Decepticon commander uh, and the noble warrior and fuses them together. And it's a shame that we never got to see him. We never got to see him fully in the um, or fully realised in the comics. We only get to see him once, and that's in the MicroMasters miniseries, where he oh, even then he only appears in a communication between Ratbat and Shockwave, who are here. Uh, Scorpion, Ratbat, and Shockwave after Megatron uh, disappears in the Nemesis, along with Optimus Prime and all of the uh, the classic Autobots and Decepticons, basically. Um, they are the three most powerful Decepticons left on Cybertron, and they're the ones leading the war effort. And all we see of him is him accusing Ratbat of being a coward for not leading from the front. He's very, very much a noble uh, warrior type who is quite fearless. Not in the UK com in in the G in the G1 comics, the original Marvel comics. He's definitely not fearless. In fact, he he comes off as a bit of a whining pansy at points, and that's really I really disliked that. In the Dreamwave comics, it looks like that element has been excised, and he really is a fearless, leading from the front warrior, which is excellent. I love that. He does have another incarnation as well, which comes from the IDW comics. He play, he's quite prominent, actually, in the IDW comics, but again, he's been reverted back to something of a stereotypical villain. The only difference is that he's more subtle than the other Decepticons. He's a rogue Decepticon in the IEW comics who seems intent on breaking every protocol and every tenet under which the Autobot Decepticon uh, war operates. And yes, there are apparently various treaties and tenets that establish rules of conduct under which the war operates in the IDW universe. Scorponok doesn't pay any heed to them. He's not interested. He's not interested in the Decepticon cause. He's not interested in loyalty. He is interested in his own power and establishing his own empire. And that is basically it. And the way he goes about doing it is very subtle. He's a very clever Decepticon. Very powerful, but very, very clever. He infiltrates alien uh, civilizations and attempts to take over very subtly their various governmental and industrial power bases and then expand his sphere of influence from there. He also shares transformer technology with alien races in return for their own technology, which is a big no-no, apparently. That's something that's not supposed to be done. And it's from this interaction that the Headmaster technology is born in the IDW universe. And he's also, interestingly, he's not by Initially, he... Uh, 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 presently, anyway, he's not binary bonded to Lord Zarak. We have seen Zarak, and he was killed by Scorponok, accidentally. Scorponok accidentally blasted him when he was trying to kill Ultra Magnus. Um... And that's the only time we've seen any hint of ambiguity in his personality. He genuinely seems to mourn the loss of Zarek and feel incredible loss. And um, guilt over the fact that he has inadvertently murdered Zarek. That's the only hint we see. He's actually binary bonded to a human in the um, current IDW ideology, he uh, continuity rather, he is binary bonded to a man named Abraham Dante, who is uh, a somewhat power-hungry industrialist, and he doesn't really seem to have much in the way of personality at all. He is just a mega baddie, as is Scorponok himself. Not much to say really about that incarnation of Scorponok. He's okay. He's not my favourite. Unless the character gets some really interesting development, I doubt he will be playing a very prominent role at all. I doubt he'll be that interesting. Anyway, that is it for Scorponox bio. He definitely deserved a big one because he's such an excellent character. So much more complicated than all of the other Decepticon leaders. And now it is my sincerest pleasure to get on to the toy. 
Now, I've chosen to start with Scorponok in his city mode. Um, not because it's my least favourite, it's not. I love this mode. This is, I think, barring perhaps Overlord, whom I think is a gorgeous Decepticon city, this is my favourite of the Decepticon base form, as I think he looks wonderful. He's got so much going for him. What are these wonderful huge ramps, which smaller Decepticons like the Combaticons and the Stunticons and the Micromasters can go up. Uh, he's got weapon racks and repair bays and loading bays and towers and communication satellites and all sorts of interesting things. He's monstrously well detailed, largely owing to stickers and bits of moulded detail. He's just wonderful in this mode. There's not that much you can do with him, really. He's not especially playable in this mode. He's basically made so that you can put smaller transformers on top of him. Um, but even so, it's so gorgeous. I display him in this mode because he looks great. He looks absolutely wonderful. He's definitely the best looking of the Decepticon base formers. It is amazing. It's very coherent as well. There's not much hint of the robot, really, unless you turn it around. Then there's quite a lot of the robot and his other mode as well, but that doesn't really matter. It all It's all kibble that works. It all seems to form a nice coherent part of the base. So absolutely no issue there. And, oh god, there's no denying, he's gorgeous. I mean, just looking at him on the screen here, he looks so good. If I was seeing this, I'd want it. I would want it, I can tell you. He ticks all my boxes. There is just something going here that does it for me. And here, the colour scheme. The colour scheme is really garish. It's purple and green and orange and grey and silver, for God's sake. But it just works so well and there is there is actually um a recolor of this guy and a slight remold known as black zarek and black zarek is gorgeous as well in fact there is a brilliant review by graham the collector 75 of black zarek and i will put up a link to it around here somewhere because it's spectacular i would definitely advise you going to check that toy out because it's it's beautiful and I, I i'll never ever own that toy i can tell you but because but i would love it I would absolutely love it. Could you imagine displaying Black Zarak next to this guy? In fact, I would like all of the Decepticon base formers. I would like Gigastorm, Trypticon, Overlord, Scorponok, and Black Zarak to display together. That would be wonderful. Not going to happen. But yes, this guy would definitely be taking centre stage because he's just so gorgeous. He's beautiful. The only complaint I have about him, and it's it's just that it's it's a general complaint that I have about all G1 base formers, is that there are so many bits. I don't have all the bits to Scorponok. I've never had all the bits to Scorponok because they are a pain in the arse to find. And most of them are useless anyway. They don't do anything. He's supposed to have little radar dishes that come out of here. And they are pains. I've never had them, but I've seen them. And they just don't do anything. They just slot into there. And then when you transform him, you need a little bag to put them in because you can't put them anywhere. So I'm not that concerned about not owning them, really. Anyway, on to the mode that uh, is his namesake in many respects. His Scorpion mode. 